internal corrosion in oil and gas pipeline systems a broad perspective part 1 lecture by dr g subramanian chief scientist retired csir central electrochemical research institute pipelines are lifelines of the global oil gas industry contributing to strong national economies to most countries pipelines have provided economic reliable means to transport oil and natural gas from upstream production often very remote regions to downstream refineries power stations and markets crossing nations oceans and continents the pipelines could be very large in diameter example the russian pipeline system has diameter up to 1422 mm and can be over several thousands of kilometers in length internal pipeline corrosion when water wet gathering pipelines the following are the criteria steel wet by oil does not corrode critical water content that will lead to water wet conditions is generally much greater than 10 percentage for corrosion to occur separation of a water phase from oil phase is required internal pitting corrosion models for water wet conditions the image at the bottom side gives the view of the internal corrosion in an oil effluent pipeline you can see the left side see through pit going to erosion corrosion or microbiological influence corrosion crude oil transmission pipelines with less than 0.5 percentage b s and w have a long history without significant corrosion b s w stands for basic sediment and water b s and w is a standard oil and gas industry term to describe the unusable elements in a well stream these are typically elements like sand paraffin dirt and water 0.5% is usually not a con- corrosion concern unless conditions exist that enable the precipitation of water on the pipe well pipe wall solubility of water in oil only 50 to 100 ppm parts per million water is present as an emulsion droplets less than 10 microns carry chlorides and solids water emulsion droplets are stabilized by asphaltene and ultrafine sub- submicron clay particles speculation that polar asphaltene flocks can precipitate with water droplets and clay particles forming larger that is 100 to 1000 microns clusters precipitation at low flow conditions to form sludge in low pressure areas most solids are fine at less than 44 microns some are greater than 400 microns and consists primarily of silica sand and iron compounds sludge deposits are mixtures of hydrocarbons sand clays corrosion by products bacteria salts and water deposits may be layered resulting in variability within the sludge the image on the top right side gives the view of a sludge and image on the bottom side gives the view of a cm scanning electron microscope with magnification of the sludge under deposit corrosion corrosive water flame can form on the pipe wall containing salts chlorides and organic acids sludges can contain large bacterial populations sulfate reducing bacteria acid producing bacteria and heterotrophic aerobic bacteria sludges with waxy oil can exhibit low or no corrosion no corrosion observed in the absence of sludge they meet on the right side top gives the view of sludge covered sample exposed to crude oil for 4 weeks The image on the bottom side gives you the view of bare sample exposed to crude oil for 4 weeks. Microbiologically influenced corrosion in a pipeline. 
the corrosion of a material when the presence of microorganisms plays a role in is known as microbiologically influenced corrosion shortly called mic activities of bacteria archaea and fungi in colonies that create biofilms on surfaces of materials or in local environments that directly contact materials can result in microbiologically influenced corrosion and most metals as well as some non metals can be affected by this type of corrosion mic typically takes place in the presence of a conglomerate of microbes comprised of multiple types of microorganisms depending on the environment these microbes may include metal oxidizing bacteria sulfate reducing bacteria acid producing bacteria metal reducing bacteria and methanogens presence of microorganisms may create conditions that foster corrosion initiation or their metabolic reactions may maintain conditions that promote continued corrosion mic does not produce visually unique corrosion morphology instead mic often results in pitting crevice under deposit and galvanic corrosion as well as de alloying in the oil and gas industry microorganisms can be found in nearly every oil and gas production environment especially pipelines they inhibit the bulk fluids that flow through oil and gas pipelines and also form biofilms on the internal surfaces of pipes in any environment there are usually multiple factors that contribute to corrosion and different corrosion mechanisms including mic can result in some corrosion morphology this is why it is crucial to verify there is a clear relationship between the biofilm and corrosion for example corrosion could be caused by an abiotic reaction fueled by the presence of water and oxygen that does not involve microorganisms at all even though they are present tm0212 2012 states that three conditions need to be met to validate mic as the cause of internal corrosion they are as follows the first one is assuming there is known or suspected contamination from outside sources the first condition is a demonstration of increased levels of specific types of viable microorganisms that is bacteria or fungi associated with the corrosion as compared to samples taken outside of the crowded area the second condition is the identification of chemical indicators in the crowded area that support the microbiological evidence that is elevated levels of sulfide or sulfur in pit deposits for srb or organic acids for acid producing bacteria the third condition is the identification of biotic factors as the primary contributor to the corrosion damage the nature of the corrosion damage to the pipeline system should be consistent with the nature of the identified microorganisms and their byproducts or physical influence on corrosion cell formation for example if viable acid producing bacteria or methanogens or concentrated at the corrosion damage relative to the environment and evidence of their metabolic activity that is organic acids is determined to be associated with the corrosion the nature of corrosion damage should be consistent with these observations example accelerated corrosion damage or pitting beneath the biofilms This is an important step in a diagnosis of MIC because it is often difficult to discern between the relative contributions of various biotic and abiotic factors that affect localized corrosion. To properly diagnose MIC, investigation should comprise a combination of chemical, metallurgical and microbiological analysis. TM0212 2012 presents information on sample collection testing methods corrosion monitoring and how to relate the results to mic sampling sampling programs generally collect information on operating conditions corrosion rates and microbiological conditions over a period of time more reliable data typically result from 
performing tests on samples representing a time range other than any single sample data collection and analysis should focus on differentiating the effects of biotic and abiotic factors on the likelihood location cause and severity of internal corrosion it is very difficult to infer what is happening on the pipeline's internal surface based solely on the composition of the bulk fluid because there isn't always a clear relationship between what is found on the surface and what comprises the bulk fluid phase the microorganisms living in the bulk fluid there is types and quantities of microbes and even the chemical composition of the bulk fluid can be far different than what is found on the internal pipe surface which has been well established in research microbiological testing microorganisms are highly sensitive to environmental changes that affect nutrient availability flow rates temperature salinity and the presence of dissolved oxygen dissolved gases etc additionally many chemicals produced by microbiological metabolisms example organic acids and sulfide compounds can be quickly oxidized or degraded by environmental changes because conditions can change rapidly once a sample is removed from the pipeline then an test relevant to mic investigation or monitoring should be performed as soon as as soon after a sample is collected as possible to obtain results that accurately represent pipeline conditions historically the ability to swiftly test samples has been one factor that has limited meaningful data collection for use in assessing pipelines for mic but improvements in technology have increased the availability of more types of tests and sophisticated analysis for field use by samples area collected yakert says various testing methods are used to determine microbiological conditions which include microbiological culture techniques microscopy measurement of bacteria produced enzymes such as hydrogenase an enzyme produced by bacteria that use hydrogen as an energy source and adenosine phosphosulfate reductase aps an enzyme specifically associated with srb and molecular microbiological methods short call yam yam yes yam 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 yes which are genetic based testing methods many times mic is caused by the activities of several different organisms that form a community and pipeline analysis has typically included testing for srb as it producing bacteria general aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms and in some cases iron depositing or and iron reducing bacteria Microscopy is frequently used to determine the overall numbers of microorganisms present in liquid or sludge samples directly without regard to their species and has been utilized as an analysis method for many years. Epifluorescent microscopy is a technique that helps differentiate microorganisms from debris and also can be used to examine microorganism specific cellular structures samples are treated with a strain that fluoresces when viewed under a specific wavelength of ultraviolet light energy dispersive spectroscopy eds to examine samples provides information on the elemental composition of materials example scale and corrosion products and the distribution of the constituents in the sample analysis with x-ray diffraction xrd identifies the mineralogical compounds present for example yakert says eds would reveal the carbon or oxygen are present in the sample while xrd would show that iron carbonate typically a corrosion product is there as well methods such as gas chromatography mos spectrometry that is gcms or high pressure liquid chromatography hplc are used in the laboratory to determine if any organic acids are present in the sample that may be a by product 
of bacterial activity testing for the presence of the hydrogenase an enzyme produced by bacteria that use hydrogen as an energy source is a method used to atomize itemize bacteria populations in corrosion deposits and water samples in the field measurement of adenosine phosphosulfate reductase APS an enzyme specifically associated with SRB provides an indication of active SRB concentration present in a bacterial sample genetic methods have recently become increasingly available for detecting quantifying and identifying microorganisms present at corrosion sites yum 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 yes needs only very small samples with or without live bacteria for analysis once genetic materials are extracted from the sample assays are performed in the laboratory which render more precise quantification of various types of bacteria present than culture test the two yum yum yes quantitative polymerase chain reaction qpcr qpcr stands for quantitative polymerase chain reaction and is a technology used for measuring dna using pcr and denaturing gradient gel electrophoresis dggge are often used in combination to analyze genetic samples the qpcr method measures living inactive and dead microorganisms and may be used to count the total number of microorganisms or a specific genus species of microorganism in nearly any type of sample including produced fluids oils emulsions and solids solids this method uses synthetic dna tagged with a fluorescent molecule to identify specific targets example microorganisms of interest that is sulfate producing bacteria because of their potential influence on corrosion mechanisms dgge genetic material in individual samples is amplified by pcr and subsequently compared by sorting molecules based on the reaction to an electric field electrophoresis This tribulum is used for identifying dominant groups of microorganisms in individual samples and for evaluating how the microorganisms are distributed between samples. Another emerging approach, next generation sequencing, NGS, enables identification of all the microorganisms in a sample other than specific targeted species. The approach will not provide specific numbers of particular organisms in the sample, Yakhart explains, but instead it delivers a snapshot of diverse microbial population and how it is distributed in the sample. The image on the top right, left side and right side gives you the view of internal corrosion a pipeline caused by microbiologically influenced corrosion. You can see etchings and crevices corrosion monitoring because microbiologically influence corrosion cannot be diagnosed solely with microbiological data the best approach to determine the presence of internal mic in a pipeline is to integrate other applicable pipeline and corrosion data with microbiological test results these data include operating conditions flow rate temperature pressure picking frequency picking is nothing but pipeline intervention gadgets picks or devices used to clean or inspect pipelines in upstream midstream and downstream oil and gas operations the name may have originated from the squealing sound of early pig models made up of straw wire or leather produced while traveling through pipelines and chemical treatment injection rates chemical composition of the gases liquids and solid transported data from corrosion coupons 
and probes that show the rates of corrosion, pitting and metal loss as well as the corrosion products present and routine inspection results. Monitoring the corrosiveness of pipeline contents is frequently done using coupons inserted into the pipeline at locations where corrosion is a potential threat. And possible corrosion monitoring data and microbiological test data should be collected from the same locations. Corrosion products may be taken from the metal surface, a lining or from a pit underneath the deposit that has been removed. When corrosion monitoring and microbiological monitoring are performed at different locations on a pipeline, the relationship between the two test locations should be identified. Example, upstream, downstream, similar operating conditions, etc. A mitigation strategy typically addresses both the microbiological and corrosion threats where MIC is present. Knowing the identity and characteristics of microorganisms present and how they interact with the pipeline system promotes an understanding of their impact on the corrosion that is being experienced, which is important when developing a mitigation strategy. So this is a view of how to pick a pipeline, clean a pipeline from debris, sand, corrosion products, etc., etc. Gas pipeline picking procedure. Pipeline picks short for pipeline intervention gadgets or devices used to clean or inspect pipelines in upstream, midstream and downstream oil and gas operations. The name may have originated from the squealing sound of early pig models made up of straw, wire or leather produced while traveling through pipelines. This is a view of the pig arrangements which moves inside the pipeline. You can see the simulation model, how pigs clean inside the pipeline system. General information about methods of controlling MIC by design operation and specific measures such as maintenance, pigging and biocide treatment can be found in NASA standard SP0106 inspection techniques commonly used to detect and monitor corrosion related damage generally include visual inspection, ultrasonic testing, radiographic testing and magnetic flux methods. The results can be used to establish the orientation distribution, density, size, shape and extent of internal corrosion damage. Inline inspection ILI, may provide information about the location and severity of internal corrosion relative to operating parameters, design, elevation and other considerations. ILI data may be used to identify sample locations for microbiological and chemical testing of pipeline fluids. As with most data related to MIC assessment, longer term operating parameter trends are preferred over one or few data points as these provide more precise information. The graph depicts data collected from a QPCR analysis, image courtesy of microbial insights. On the y-axis you can have have cells or gene copies per ml x-axis we have sample 1 sample 2 sample 3 the blue color bar gives you a total bacteria and the the red color bars represents sulfate reducing bacteria so sample 1 it gives you total bacteria and sample 2 you can see both total bacteria and out of it how much is SRB available and sample 3 total bacteria and out of which how, how much SRB is available. So sample 3 has maximum amount of sulfate reducing bacteria. The graph depicts data collected from an NGS analysis image courtesy of microbial insights. Next generation sequencing data. You can see it has delta proteobacteria 21 percentage gamma proteobacteria 18 percentage 
and beta proteobacteria 8% and alpha proteobacteria 11% clostridia 11% sphingobacteria 9% bacilli 2% and anaerobiae 2% this is a view of composition of the different bacterial population produced by next generation sequencing data sludge composition you can see soluble in white percentage heptane xylene water acetic acid hexyl residue whereas the columns x y phase 1 phase 2 under the x we have 17.8 1.3.81 and 0.8 78.3 and why we have 17 heptane xylene 1.1 water 0.4 acetic acid 0.3 hcl 1.8 residue 79.4 under phase 1 we have 15 heptane 6.4 xylene 0.7 water 8.3 acetic acid and 23.3 hcl and 46.5 residue under phase 2 all these things are nil then index weight percentage gives you carbon oxygen silicon sulfur iron under x carbon is 6.1 oxygen 54.9 silicon 31.3 sulfur 0.6 iron 3.4 under y carbon 5 oxygen 49.2 silicon 30 sulfur 1.6 iron 10.8 under phase 1 we have carbon 1.6 oxygen 37.1 silicon 14.4 sulfur 6 and iron 27.34 under phase 2 carbon 6.6 oxygen 46.2 silicon 26.9 sulfur 1 iron 14.6 on the right side you have dean stark analysis phase 1 phase 2 solid weight percentage you have 72.3 in phase 1 phase 2 85 percentage oil by weight percentage 24.8 in phase 1 and 4.5 in phase 2 water weight percentage 2.9 in phase 1 and 10.4 in phase 2 inhibitor test protocol mitigation includes picking and chemical treatment need to understand the corrosive influence of sediment and effectiveness of mitigation five chemical inhibitors vendors were encouraged to develop chemical treatments aimed to aim at reducing under deposit corrosion inhibitor test protocol was developed in collaboration considering a multifunctional batch inhibitor ability to penetrate sludge filming effectiveness and bactericidal properties testing methodology components of bacterial kill experiments and under deposit corrosion experiments bacterial kill experiments greater surface area for inhibitor penetration 2 mm deep sludge oil plus 5000 ppm of inhibitor under nitrogen place it on rocking table for 24 hours the results of bacterial kill experiments you can see the plot active colony forming units cfu per ml and you have on the x axis initial sludge control inhibitor a inhibitor b inhibitor c inhibitor d and inhibitor e where the blue bar represents heterotrophic aerobic bacteria red bar represents acid producing bacteria and green bar represents sulfur producing bacteria so when you compare among the five inhibitors the inhibitor b is capable of controlling heterotrophic aerobic bacteria virus likewise uh, the, both and again the inhibitor b is capable of controlling to an extent heterotrophic aerobic bacteria and uh, the inhibitor c is capable of controlling both srb and acid producing bacteria general comments sludge with the low srb population inhibitor effectiveness can be measured differences in inhibitor effectiveness is observed in further analysis to the previous plot now we can see under bacterial kill experiments methodology may be appropriate but how well does the inhibitor assessment predict its performance in the field 
it's a complex system variable oil chemistry variable sludge chemistry heterogeneous and bacteria populations are a function of time under deposit corrosion testing here we have no standardized under deposit test procedure oil free sand or oil wetted sand has been used in brine solutions nature of sludge is critical in evaluating the success of an inhibitor the test method should be able to assess the inhibitor effectiveness at conditions that can be extended to the pipeline so under this under deposit corrosion experiments you have carbon steel coupon recessed in teflon holder by 1 m 1 mm you can see the images on the right side experimental setup inhibitor 1 1 mm thick layer of sludge inhibitor added to the oil controls with no inhibitor pipeline heavy crude oil four week long exposure experiment on rocking table in in anaerobic chamber 10% carbon dioxide nitrogen at 25 degree centigrade visually examined for pits and corrosion and using an optical profiler BART BART before and after bacterial activity reaction test has been conducted before and after the experiments under deposit corrosion experiments the plot gives you the view of you can see corrosion rate in mills per year and the number of experiments are bar coupon sludge inhibitor a inhibitor b inhibitor c inhibitor d and inhibitor e the green bar gives you the corrosion rate of bar copper uh, carbon steel coupon and the blue bar gives you the corrosion rate of 1000 ppm inhibitor anet carbon steel coupon so amit you can see that uh, the inhibitor d is capable of for both bar and uh, 1000 ppm anet inhibitor is capable of reducing minimizing the corrosion rate of carbon steel coupon 1 mm sludge deposit 1000 1000 ppm inhibitor added to oil inhibitors provide protection ability to assess inhibitor performance is possible so of this of the five inhibitor d is capable of reducing corrosion minimizing corrosion of carbon steel under deposit corrosion testing under this the developed methodology enables assessment of inhibitor performance remaining challenges are variable and dynamic sludge properties uncertain what the controlling corrosion mechanism is whether bacterial corrosion aqueous corrosion or combination of both long term corrosion exposure experiments and correlating the corrosion results to the sludge chemistry and bacterial populations would throw more light internal corrosion of crude oil transmission lines under deposit corrosion questions that remains unanswered the controlling corrosion parameters the sludge deposition mechanism the role of crude oil chemistry the role of delivery process steps there are crude oil lines that have operated trouble free for over 25 years not unique to delbit lines delbit is a bitumen diluted with one or more lighter petroleum products typically natural gas condensate such as naphtha diluting bitumen makes it much easier to transport for example in pipelines so delbit stands for diluted bitumen bp experience leaks in trans alaska pipeline attributed to under deposit corrosion in the presence of carbon dioxide and bacterial populations So on the right image on the right side gives the view of the trans alaska pipeline system the guardian january 2011 current pycom research directed towards internal corrosion monitoring and mitigation of crude oil pipelines corrosion underneath sludge deposits water and microbiologically influenced corrosion for baselining and optimization of mitigation tools laboratory experiments evaluating monitoring technologies and mitigation effectiveness design construction and commissioning of pilot scale flow loop crude oil flow loop has the following 
crude oil pipeline simulation flow rate and temperature control pick design evaluation chemical inhibitor evaluation real time corrosion rate monitoring simulation of localized corrosion that is pitting and microbiologically influenced corrosion this is a picturesque view of the crude oil flow loop arrangement some of the projects proposals which has been successfully carried out effectiveness of corrosion inhibitor in simulated crude oil transmission pipelines with the less, less than with, with 0.05% bs and w assessment of the corrosivity of sludge from dill bit lines versus sludge from conventional crude oil lines effectiveness of corrosion inhibitor in simulated upstream pipelines higher water cut effect of flow rate on corrosion in crude and water systems evaluation of pit design for sludge removal from corrosion pits in heavy oil pipelines the effect of cleaning pigs on corrosion rates when applied after inhibitor fleming scoping study survey of pipe manufacturers and pipeline operators with respect to mill defects and solutions to off spec pipe scoping study literature review of life cycle analysis for new non metallic pipeline materials as well as liquid significant incidents by cars between 2010 and 2016 so you can see here 25 percentage corrosion amounts going to corrosion and 29 percentage amounts to other outside force damage 12 percent amounts to incorrect operation and 30 percent amounts to material failure of pipe or weld and 7% amounts to excavation damage only 4% amounts to material 4% amounts to equipment failure and only 6% amounts to natural force damage natural gas transmission gas transmission significant incidents by cause between 2010 and 2016 here you can see 26% owing to corrosion and 14 percentage owing to excavation damage 17 percentage owing to material failure of pipe or well and 20 percentage of other outside force damage and only 7 percentage owing to equipment failure so major contributors are corrosion material failure other outside force damage natural gas distribution gas distribution significant incidents by cause between 2010 and 16 here the corrosion amounts only to 3 percentage whereas excavation damage amounts to 31 percentage and other outside force damage amounts to 26 percentage and incorrect operation only amounts to 8 percentage equipment failure amounts to only 3 percentage gas transmission onshore pipeline significant incident rates per decade between 2005 and 2016 incidents per 1000 miles unknown and pre 1940 decade leading cause is corrosion if it is about it now uh, it is about uh, 0.18 rate between 1940 and 49 it's about 0.19 rate between 1950 and 59 it's about 0.82 Point uh, zero point zero eight two between nineteen sixty and sixty nine. It is between point one between nineteen seventy nine and seven seventy and seventy nine. It is between it is point zero nine between nineteen seventy nine and seventy nine. 
between 1980 and 89 it is uh, 0.07 between 1990 and 1999 it is nearly 0.05 and between 2000 and 2009 it is 0.039 between 19 and 2010 and 2019 it is uh, the rate is about 0.11 so you can see that the incident rate or less during 1990 1999 and 2000 and 2009 with the emerging technologies we can overcome we can reduce that uh, failures equip all the told into to the failures so 2010s decade leading cause is equipment failure and 1940s decade leading cause is material failure of pipe or well and unknown and pre 1940 decade leading cause is corrosion incidents of internal corrosion 2000 calls back new mexico gas transmission 12 fatalities In 2008, Pasadena, Texas, petroleum, one fatality, 5,500 barrels released. In 2013, Cushing, Oklahoma, crude oil, 2,250 barrels released. In 2016, Franklin County, Missouri, petroleum, 657 barrels released. Thank you very much for watching this video and thanks for your patience.